All right, guys, good morning. It's Deb Ward. And okay, perfect. So um, thank you so much for coming to the class. And I hope that it's beneficial for you to spend some time with me this morning as we talk about planner manners. So just a little bit of history on me. Um, I've been in the business for 20 years and most of that time has been with Keller Williams. Um, I did take a little sabbatical for a few years and I'm back now at the office for a year. And so this whole planner manners class came out of a necessity for me back in the day. So I'm going to take you back all the way to 2008. And I was in a class in the Bel Air office and there was a gentleman by the name of John Dietz, who if you guys are not friends with him on Facebook, I highly encourage you to be friends with him on Facebook. He's now a very successful team leader in South Florida. And so John came in to teach a class and I remember him coming into the room and he had all these piles of things with him. And I'm like, he had photographs of his kids. He came into the room and I'm like, I don't know what this guy's doing. Why is he doing all this? And so by the time the class was over, I was like, I need to talk to this person. I need to coach with him. I don't know who he is. I know nothing about him. And that was what started me on this journey of trying to be organized. So, um, John is also, I'm a high D personality and John is also high D. So we're very driven. We're not very organized and detailed. And so my business was growing as faster than I could keep up. And I hired John as a coach that day and he was not an official coach. And so that pushed me into doing even more activities. So I was using sticky notes. I was so proud of my sticky notes. I had sticky notes on the car dash. I had them on the car seat. I had them everywhere. So. I found myself working later and later at night. I had a small child. He was one at the time. And there was one night in particular that I was leaving the office after midnight. And as I was getting into the car, I was war torn. Um, there was a sticky note on the bottom of my shoe that was an appointment that I had missed that fell out of the car. And I'm like, that's it, I'm done, okay? I can't run a business like this on sticky notes. I just can't. So I went into a store and I bought my very first planner which was back in 2008. And so I have pretty much every year since that, up to the current day, used a planner for my business, okay? I appreciate that Dane is of the generation where everything's gonna be done electronically. And I, I encourage you to pay attention to the concepts and then apply it into your virtual worlds, you younger folks, okay? So that's the background to why I started to use a planner. And um, it's changed my life completely. Now it's evolved over the years. Um, and I always buy the same one with the exception of one year, I bought a KW Maps planner and let's just say it was an interesting experience. But in any event, um, it's the same planner. I've always used the same one every year. It's at a glance, Doreen orders it for me every October, so I have it ready. So just to give you a little bit of background about my structure as well. Um, I have a small team, so Doreen has worked with me um, as my team manager now for over 10 years, and we're blessed to have Robert on our team. He's been with us for how many months now? But I had worked with Robert last year. We had uh, part of when we left Keller Williams, we were working in a different brokerage as a coach and trainer team for that brokerage, and I hired Robert there as a brand new agent. And, you know, it took him a little while to realize that he might want to join us over here. So we're thrilled to have him. And he's a testament to how these planners work. Okay, so, so that's pretty much it as far as the background. So every day I have my planner with me. I also have my journal. So I journal every single morning because I'm in coaching. I have a little notebook instead of a sticky note. Okay, so if I need to write stuff down and then it, the deal is at the end of the day that has to be put into something else so that I don't forget what it is that I wrote down because things are going to happen throughout the day. Okay. So that's what I would have to say about that. And then I'm walking around. You can, Robert will agree with this. That everywhere I go, this planner is with me. Okay. So, and I've tried to do it on my phone and it just doesn't work for me. This is the best opportunity that I have to stay organized. So any questions on the planner or which one to get or what might work for you? I don't know. Um, are you Electronic devices for yours? I use a pen too. I have a printer in my book. Okay. But this looks like a weekly Bobby, how about you? What are you using? I'm like you. It's old school because I made a key ring binder. Okay. I customized the uh, layout. Okay. But I, I had a rude awakening for getting organized, but that's why I'm here because I see the importance of it. So I'm just trying to get better because as you learn, 
it's a, it's a, it's a process for uh, sure. Like yeah, for sure. Melanie, what about you? What do you use? So I've always used some type of paper calendar, but now I use Planner Planet. Okay. Um, just because something that I've learned from Bold, uh, some things that funnel in this particular planner that I like. Okay. Like I've always, like, I have every calendar for the last 20 years. Sure. And then, Dane, you're, so we talked about this before class. You're planning on going virtual. Yeah. Google Calendar. And it doesn't matter which one you use, just make sure you use it, right? So that's the first thing. So thanks for sharing that, guys. So let's talk a little bit about the 80-20 rule. Who knows what the 80-20 rule means? All right, Bobby, you're up. So Korea says that 80% of the wealth comes in 20% of the economy. Right. So you guys understand that. So 80% of the results come from 20% of the effort, OK? So who can tell me what our 20% is as realtors? And? And? It's pretty much everything. So here's the thing. Okay. So if you look, it's lead, it's lead generation, lead follow-up, go on appointments, negotiate contracts, and practice and role play. That's, what's, that's the top of our 20% top down okay so let me read it again lead gen lead follow-up go on appointments negotiate contracts and practice and role play so everything else goes after that everything personal time everything until and unless our 20 percent is done we stay in our 20 percent okay that would be the goal so it's our job okay so here's how i did it was out of necessity. I, I, this is the most recent one. I'm happy to share with you this week's uh, schedule. So, um, and I'm going to just tell you a little bit about me personally, so you can understand where I'm coming from at the moment. So I had a serious health situation happen in the middle of last year, which pretty much put me out of business for the second half of the year last year. Okay. So I'm coming from a screeching stop at the moment, and I got immediately into coaching. I'm coaching with Pat Mancuso since the start of the year and it has totally rocked my world so you you can see just the structure so let's just talk about different colors so blue is education okay so you can see there's a lot of education in my schedule okay orange is prospecting so you can see i've adapted the time frame for doing my prospecting based on my coaching schedule okay orange is prospecting uh, yellow is preview orange is preview I'm sorry, orange is prospecting, um, green is list appointments, okay? So if you have a listing appointment with a buyer or a listing appointment with a seller, they both count as listing appointments, okay? So they are in your 20% as well, right? Blue is education, and then purple is team. So if you guys see the trend in here already, on a Wednesday, I meet with Robert for two hours to do one-on-one -on -one coaching and role play and practice because we're both working mostly from home. So we, we do a concentrated meeting on a, on a Wednesday after or Wednesday morning. That's written in stone, subject to Robert needing to alter it because he has a new baby. But that's the coolest thing about this is if you have one of these guys, you can totally fix and replace, okay? So I go through these like crazy and I don't care what they cost. I'm sure there's a cheaper way and I don't care because it's so cool just to be able to draw a line and then take it out and replace it with something else. And that's all it takes to keep yourself on track other than trying to figure out what to do because we constantly have to be changing what we're doing if something comes up and we have to rearrange, okay? Yeah? Do you put personal in there? Oh gosh, yeah. So it's a great question. So pink is personal, okay? So I'm actually going to be going out of town this weekend. Um, and you can see I have a lot of pink time ahead of me. And I don't have any um, element of guilt around that because I'm actually behind the eight ball on my goals. And yet you have to have counterbalance in your world, period, the end, okay? So it's time blocked and it's in my schedule. And by the way, it's not negotiable because I'm going out of town. So if a buyer or seller was to call me and I'm out of town, give me any anxiety whatsoever because if in fact they are truly a, an a buyer or somebody's ready willing and able to list their property i can i can consult with them over the phone 
if the buyer has to see a house today, I have wonderful Robert in my team. So I have leverage for that. And if it's a listing opportunity, we can do the listing, op listing appointment over the phone if we really have to. But most times you're able to give them an alternative choice. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, thank you so much for calling me and I would love the opportunity to meet with you. Just to let you know, I'm going to be out of town this weekend. So if I can go ahead and look into next week, my current availability is at 11 o'clock on Tuesday or four o'clock on Monday, which works best for you. So how do I know that I'm free? Because I already have planned next week out and I see where the open spots are. Now, Robert does it a little differently and it's a mindset for him, which is great. So he's already blocking his appointments in his schedule just to help him be forward thinking and to be able to put buyers and sellers in there. You're gonna use a lot of this, just so you know. All right, so just know however, it, however you set it up for you, you have to work with whatever you decide you're going to do, okay? So too many years, too many years of me um, taking away from my family to meet that buyer real quick that never panned out because I didn't qualify them properly or a seller that really wasn't a seller that was ready to sell. So it's okay for you to take control of your time within reason. There are opportunities that come up sometimes where you just, you either have to go or you have to pass it on to somebody else if it's time sensitive. But for the most part, you don't have to jump, Robert, right? You just don't have to jump. So, um, the 80 20 rule again so that so if you see now my my 20 percent my 20 percent stuff is in here so in the morning i have an accountability call at 7 30 for 15 mm. minutes and my goal the game that i play with myself in the morning is that i'm already dressed in my gym clothes ready to go to the gym as soon as i get off the phone at 7 45 mm. and then i've got to be back no, into my I Brian Coward. So sorry, guys. So when I come back from the gym, I'm my my plan is to get into the shower and be ready for my call at 930. So when you have your time scheduled, you'll make it work. Okay. So for me, it's important that by the time I get on that call with Pat, that I'm fully dressed and ready to work. As soon as I get off that call at 945, I'm on the phone. That's, that's my job. Okay. And that's, it's non-negotiable. It really isn't. It's not, or it is, it's non-negotiable. So as you can see, I already have plenty of appointment time available for next week. All right. So hopefully that'll start to fill in based on the activities that I'm currently doing. Okay. Sure. Is that normal? Well, it's just the program that I'm working with. It's a slightly different. He's not a maths coach anymore. So it's a slightly different program that we're doing. So, and then we have a content call as well. So it's just, and as, a res, as I say, for me, and I, I'm being very transparent, I literally was starting from stop, okay? So just to kind of give you an idea of the impact that that's had in the last 20, whatever number of days it is, what date is today? Okay, so in 25 days, um, I've gone from having no pipeline, no business at all, being super transparent, guys, to having a uh, listed property you don't know about yet because it's not going on the market till next week. So I've got a listed property and two A buyers I'm currently working with. I did not have on January 2nd. So that's just purposeful behavior, okay? So if I can do it, coming from a complete stop, you and you guys in the room can totally do it as well. Robert's out there, he's doing live videos, he's out there prospecting, he's door knocking, he's, uh, he's doing open houses. So there's, there's opportunity guys, for sure, okay? So it was a good question. But the goal would be to have as much green in here as you possibly could, all right? So that's the goal. And, and then it's, a, for me, it's okay to know that it may not happen today, but as long as I stay in the activities, the results will come. Okay, so, and then the importance then is if you're on the road and you start to be busy doing showings or going to listing appointments, it's imperative that you keep this updated and with you so that if you get a phone call on the fly, that you can actually do something with the call and not be fumbling to figure it out, okay? So for those of us that choose to use phones, I don't know how that works. I don't know how you can manage a schedule on the phone when you're on the phone. Just be aware of that. Hands free. Picking up. 
Still, no, we're not doing sticky notes. We're done. No, no, there's no sticky notes. No more sticky notes allowed in Deb's world. It, it, it was not a good situation. Trust me. They were, they were all over my car. It was very ugly. So, okay. So here's the thing. So we're all wired differently. Okay. Every personality has a different way of doing business. So if we talk about the different types of ways to generate business, you're either prospecting based a networker or you're marketing based or a combination of those. Okay. So I've had people ask me in classes before, well, you know, I'm a networker. I'm not making the phone calls. Okay. So then if you're at a network event, then you better be purposeful with why you're there and what you're doing. Are you there just to shoot the breeze and drink coffee and have bagels? Cause that would be my worst nightmare. So for me, I prefer to make my phone calls and I have a very healthy database now at this point in my career. So I have no desire to be involved in a networking event. That actually makes me cringe to think about it. I'm just being super honest. So rather than me have to go down that road, I'm making my phone calls. So, and then the other way is marketing based. So I've never been marketing based in my business because it costs money. So I don't like to spend money on things like that when I can make phone calls. That's always been my philosophy and it has paid dividends for me over the years. That doesn't mean that a marketing based agent is not going to be as or more successful. And you can have a combination of those three things, but you just need to know what it is. And then is it in your 20%? Okay. So if you're marketing based and you're spending money, that's part of your 20%. And then you're still going to have to make phone calls because if the calls come in, you still have to convert. Okay. So it, and it's a personal choice based on your, you know, on your personality style. Sure. It's a great question. So back in the day before I had a database, I was a hardcore FISBO and expired caller. So I, I took classes at sweat hogs. I don't even know who else remembers sweat hogs. I'm really showing my age now, but we were taught to only prospect for expires and FISBOs. So I have no fear of them as a result. I mean, they're, they're an interesting group for sure. And time on task beats talent all day long, all day long. If, if I, if I would have kept notes back in the day, I could have made 50, 60, 70 phone calls to expireds over and over and over and over again. And eventually they would list with me or they would list with somebody else. So that's, that's the hardcore. And obviously it's a little different now with the do not call list and all of that. So please be aware of that also. Um, so that was, that was how I started because I didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody here at all. Really, I didn't. I have my aunt and uncle that live here and that's it. I was new to the area and no choice. And then because I got involved with John Dietz way back in the day, um, he was expired in FISBO calling himself. So he was a really great match for me to start my business that way. Now, you can also pros circle prospect in a neighborhood. So let me explain what that is. Um, so if you target a neighborhood, which Robert is targeting at the moment, his own neighborhood, um, you can do a combination of door knocking, uh, ideally get a listing of an open house and really make it a neighborhood open and get yourself known in the neighborhood. Or in Robert's case, he has a new baby that he's walking around the neighborhood with. It's a great way to, to start a conversation. Okay. So you can, you can do it that way, of course. Um, and then as I built my database of people, I did mind my people. I know that's an Irish expression. So I take care of my people. Okay. So, and, and with Doreen's help, truthfully, because I just get the call log. I don't need to know the wall of stuff that's behind that. I just know the most recent notes and the next call that has to be made. So she has managed and massaged those people and maybe they've been removed from the top 100 or maybe they sold and listed or something with somebody else, which is an aha for me because you're never necessarily getting through your top 100. Okay, so be aware of that. So for me, I'm blessed to have a top 100 that accounts for about 80, I think it's about 85% of my business. Okay. Now, having said that, did I say I came to a screeching halt last year? So that has caused me to have to, to, you know, be more proactive in my approach now that I'm, I'm back up and running again. Um, and so I've actually called a couple of FISBOs myself. So, and I'm, I'm being honest, I'm very rusty about that right now because I was so heavily into my database. Okay. So if I'm going to ask Robert to do it, I better be willing to do it myself.
okay? So it's just hard because we're working from home, so he doesn't hear me on the phone and I don't hear him on the phone, but he's doing the activities. So circle prospecting is another very inexpensive way um, to, to generate opportunity for yourselves. Um, we made, Doreen, I didn't do anything. Doreen made uh, a, a landing page. I'm not even sure what I'm saying. And we had a flyer made and I hired my cousin's kids to walk three neighborhoods. So we dropped out 275 flyers on in chicken bags. And, um, oh yeah, chicken bags. Sorry, I better explain chicken bags. <laughs> so back in the day, they, no, no, not even. No, back in the day, the way that was, the way they became called, being called chicken bags was because you were too chicken to knock at the door. Oh, okay. So they're just chicken bags. It's a true. That's, that's the truth, right? So, um, so we made flyers up. And as I say, I hired my cousins, uh, two girls, and we gave them a map of all the streets that we had targeted on the neighborhoods that we wanted, which were within walking distance of where they lived. And the price point made sense for us. And they delivered all 275. It cost me $30 to have them hand delivered in the chicken bags. And you know, these are cute, they're cute little girls. And so even if people were outside, there was less resistance than there would have been perhaps if it was me, okay? So that worked out well because I believe we've gotten one, maybe two inquiries and they just went out. So that's another very inexpensive way to do that. You're, are you dropping, are you doing, you're using chicken bags too. So I got, I got okay to do um, a door knock, uh, open knock for the houses and things. Okay, in a deed restricted community. Yeah, over in Harvard as well. Yeah. So that's lead generation. So on the flyer is the link mm -hmm. to the landing page. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thus, they're clicking through to what? Well, then she has to. You go ahead. So I know she she uses listings to lead. I'm sure there's other avenues. Yeah. Um, as a so it's just a link that's linked to her. Like, so they actually had to go in and type it out. Boom, 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 on the computer. Right. And then it brings them to her account's landing page. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean. So I can do it just to my website. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So the, again, we're talking about lead generation. So that's a time block blocked activity. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be on the phones. You can walk, you can, you can do that. And then as I say, obviously, if you're a networker, then you can do your lead generation as a networker as well. It doesn't have to be, it can be a combination of all that. Just, not, I'm not, not interested. And so, and it's, it's interesting. I was invited to a is it BNI, is that what it's called? BN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was clammy, cold and freaked out about going to that because they had a huge room of people and I'd never been to one before. And I was a guest of my attorney actually. And they allow you to speak for like two minutes. And I'm like, I think I need to go to the bathroom. I was so uncomfortable in that environment. So so for me, the phone calls and the relationships that I've built are, are the way for me to run my business successfully. But you guys, especially you and you guys, need to find your niche and then you need to focus on that 20% and don't stop until you have more business and you know what to do with. That would be my advice, right? So, okay, I'm in stereo now, that's great. So um, there's a lot of people that 